Hello. I've been playing around with the music volume because it keeps going really loud. So please let me know if there is anything I need to do about it from your end. Um, just let me know in chat if I need to change the volumes or anything. Um, so, hello, I am Suzaki and today, what is that on my, hang on, paper box, no, you can go away, thank you, weird. So, I'm Suzaki, and today I am continuing my Scarlet Hollow playthrough. I wasn't going to um, stream today, but I really want to know what happens next in the story. So, I hope you enjoy. Going right in where we left off, into episode two. Let's see a recap because I don't know if people watching today or watching yesterday and I don't know if I can remember everything that happened yesterday. So settle in for a recap. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and CD depots that felt unsafe in the, even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself travelling like this but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Pearl and Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore, even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will safely be accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. So, has Stella mentioned she's famous? Ha! Huh. Oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you're not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. She hunts cryptids. Single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of Stella's flashlight while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. Come on you, whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. You dive forward and scoop Gretchen into your arms just before she manages to wriggle out of her harness. I mean, I would die for Gretchen at this point. So, sure. Your eyes fixate on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulder. God damn it! Yeah, I, I do remember that. His, uh, his face got blown off. Happens. Stella, keep an eye on her for us. Make sure she doesn't get into any more trouble. I would like to point out at this point that it was Stella that got me into all the trouble. As far as I remember, at every possible turn, I was trying to get out of the trouble. I was trying to back away. I was trying to not get into danger. And it was Stella that made me do it. So, just saying. Welcome home. Oh yeah, there's a creepy dude. I forgot about creepy dude. From the relative safety of your cousin's uncomfortable guest bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments, for now you're safe and warm. Tuesday morning awaits. Let's wake up then. See what the day has in store for us. The sun has risen, the birds are singing. You are still alive, and for now, you are safe. I mean, that's the minimum I expect from most mornings. 
Your gaze wanders across the room to the window into the woods beyond. You wonder if the monsters are lurking there right now, just beyond the trees, ready to pounce as soon as you leave the crumbling estate. A familiar unease settles into your gut. Turn that down a bit. A familiar unease settles into your gut, tangling into a knot of anxiety, wriggling as the events of last night play out in your head. You can't help but remember Duke slumped against a tree, pieces of him scattered across the clearing. You're not sure if you'll ever feel okay again after what you've seen. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're going to need some therapy. I mean, that's for sure. But you can't stay in bed forever. I mean, it is a valid option, to be fair. But it's not my bed and I don't think it's very comfortable. So. Hunger pulls you from the clammy depths of the... Um, clammy mattress. It's not what you want. Uh, let's do some exploring. I should probably unpack. I didn't do that yesterday. You never wind up putting your clothes away yesterday. Might as well get that out of the way before you start the day. Oh, hello. You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. An opossum lurks within. It's quiet, but angry. Oh, pardon me. You gently close the drawer, leaving the marsupial in peace. This drawer belongs to the opossum, and there's nothing you can do about it. You open the top drawer next. It's empty. As good a place as you'll find to put your clothes. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you'd have been better off keeping your clothes in your nice clean bag, but there's no going back now. I mean, I could... could take them out of the drawer, I suppose. Oh, just a warning, by the way. This chap... Ugh, might get annoying. Say hello. Hello. You're not saying anything. No. Because he was fed at five o'clock. He's forgotten he was fed at five o'clock. He thinks it's dinner time now. So... We'll see if it gets annoying. Won't we? Hey, mister. Hmm. Let's poke around the closet. Why not? After what you went through last night, the last thing you needed this morning was waking up to find a doll in your closet. It doesn't look especially creepy as dolls go, does it? It's not the creepiest doll I've ever seen. You pick up the doll to examine it more closely. It's foot reads property of Alexandra. There's no way you're taking this with you. You close the closet behind you. Look out the window. You creep towards the window, careful not to be seen by whatever might be lurking in the garden. For a second, you thought you saw movement. Yeah, there was something, wasn't there? It could have been an animal. It could have been something else. Whatever it was, it's gone now. Maybe you'll head out there and investigate after you've finished waking up. It's text Stella. It's probably a good idea to check in with your new friend. You can't imagine she's holding up very well. <laughs> Yo, what up? Mm. Always send a cat picture. It might take her a minute to get back to you. In the meantime, get dressed and head down to the kitchen. Time to start your day. You're back in the kitchen. Fru Fru eyes you from her favourite spot on the counter. Hey Fru Fru! Uh, excuse me ma'am, but may I pet your beautiful fur? Part of you hopes that flattery might win her over, as silly as that may seem. You are, after all, talking to a cat. Fru Fru merely flicks her tail faster. Doesn't look promising. Hey! Did you know the police called me this morning? I mean, okay, I did tell you last night that I saw a man die and you just completely ignored that I said that, so. You've only been here one day and you've already had a run in with the cops. Did the cops say anything about Duke? Did they find the body? body. 
They didn't say anything about a body, but apparently he never went home last night. And they had quite a few questions about you, Suzaki. And before you ask, don't worry, I told them that you're an upstanding citizen. Mm. She does seem unfazed. You seem unfazed by this. A man's dead, Tabitha. Some old farmer disappeared after going hunting in the middle of the woods at night. So what? Something like that was bound to happen eventually. And frankly, you're lucky it didn't happen to you. Do I seem unfazed? Maybe I am. I'm just sick of dealing with other people's problems. Just make sure nothing like this happens again for the rest of the week, alright? Yeah. We were chased through the woods by monsters and you're worried about the cops? Yeah, I'm worried about the cops. I'm busy and I don't like talking to them. Yeah, what is up with her and Stella? What is up with you and Stella? We just have a history, that's all. I don't need to explain myself to you. Let's try and get in her good books. Is there anything I can do to help out? You can stay out of trouble while I do my job. Oh, and I want you home by sunset. Are you my mum now? I don't want to hear complaints. Just do what I ask and we won't have any more problems. Tabitha takes a few steps towards the door. Sunset. Alright. Your cousin huffily exits the kitchen. Her footsteps fade down the hall, ending in the characteristic creak, then slam of the front door as it opens and closes behind her. Once again, you're the only human in the estate. A text from Stella. Uh, it's not another tired cat, it's the same tired cat. Hope you're holding up okay, or as good as you can with all the stuff we saw last night. I was up most of the night on cryptid forums. No real answers yet. I'm at the library now if you want to join. I have scones. Hmm. Is there anything I need to do? I don't think there's anything I need to do around the house, is there? Yeah, I'll go for scones. And that's it. Time to start your day. Oh, but I can investigate the garden. As your eyes wander to the garden door, you shudder, remembering the brief glimpse of something you saw from your upstairs window. It was probably just a raccoon, but the uncertainty of what you saw gnaws at you and compels you to investigate, if only to prove that it was nothing. At the very least, you don't see anything now. Investigate. You wander further into the garden, trying to pinpoint the spots where that thing had been lurking. If indeed there had been a thing to begin with. The garden is peaceful, but undeniably eerie. Here, more than anywhere else, you're surrounded by the ghost of what this place used to be. A greenhouse sits in the middle of the overwhelming greenery, unreachable from years of neglect, its glass clouded and cracked. Statues reach out from within seas of weeds as if begging to be rescued. And most strikingly, behind a pair of rusted metal gates at the very peak of the mountain sits a graveyard. You can just make out a few of the headstones, the scarlet name carved deep and proud into their faces. You notice what a good view someone would have of your window if they stood where you're standing right now. I'm cluing for look. Ooh. You crouch down, pushing aside the greenery to examine the soft earth. A boot print. A big boot print. And what looks like some kind of viscera. I don't think viscera is ever a happy word. Your, thirst, you, your thoughts turn to the spectre from the night before. You snap a quick photo just in case it comes in handy later. You send the photo to Stella. Look what I found in the garden across from my window. No way that's Tabitha. <laughs> <coughs> mm. No way that's Tabitha sized. You head back inside. Time to figure out what to do with the rest of your day. Head to town. Scorns. The walk back to town is much less pleasant today than it was yesterday when you didn't yet know the woods were full of monsters and strange men who know your name. You stare anxiously into the darkness between the trees, searching for any signs of movement, but the woods are still, at least for now. 
The autumn-tinged mountains sprawling for miles in every direction now feel less like beautiful scenery and more like the walls of a cage. Your phone buzzes in your pocket. Jeez, that's creepy. All the more reason to come to the library. Look who I found at the library. Said she was up all night thinking about the video. Adding you to group text. Who's that? Oh, that's Kanika. I'm only here because it's quieter than the store, or was, lol. And I'm trying to figure out what animal that could be. I don't buy into this harbinger of doom stuff. What harbinger of doom stuff? We know what animals they are. They're ditchlings, and they are harbingers of doom. Do we know that? Sounds like they're having fun. Uh, yeah. Um, excuse me, what are ditchlings? Almost back to town. Continue down the path. You make it to town in one piece. No creatures jumped out at oh. I clicked! No creatures jumped out at you. No scary men blocked your path. The sight of some other people is comforting, helping you forget the things you've witnessed as if they happened to someone else. Oh, hey, Suzaki. We were just talking about you. I stopped at Sybil's to pick up her new tea blend, and, well, you're the biggest thing to come into town since the coal mine. Folks have been absolutely buzzing about you. I'm Sybil. I run the tea house. I believe you've met my daughter's friend, Stella. You went out with her last night, right? Did something happen out there? She barely even waved when she walked by. Uh... I don't think there's a reason to keep it a secret. Stella and I went into the woods to try and find a skunk ape, but we ran into something way worse. Actual monsters. I have no idea what they are, but they killed Duke and have been mutilating the local wildlife. Okay, technically they didn't kill Duke. Technically Duke killed Duke with his own shotgun. It's kind of their fault, but so far they haven't hurt anyone, so I don't know if they're actually bad. Don't know. Whoa, 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 slow down. Duke is dead. It's true, I'm afraid. The creatures they encountered are called Ditchlings, and they're a terrible omen of things to come. Stella stopped by last night and told me about her and Suzaki's encounter in the woods. That's awful. Has anyone told Bo? Yes, he's taking it as well as you can imagine. I'll be going up to check on him today, the poor lad. I can't believe you had to see that, Suzaki. Tell you what, I'm on break for the next half hour. How about you swing by the diner? Winnie can fix you some of Sybil's new blends to, and try and calm your nerves. It's chaga and lemon balm. It always helped me on, on the bad days. And if you need to talk about what happened, I'm all ears. Anyways, it's up to you. See you around, Suzaki. See you, Sybil. Take care now, Avery. I'd better get back to it myself. But before I go, a word. The ditchlings I mentioned are a terrible omen. A sign of great suffering and destruction to come. I've told Stella and my daughter as much as I know, though I'm afraid that's not very much. Mm. How do you know all this? I've never heard anything about creatures like them, and I'm no stranger to myths and legends. I felt like I should have at least heard something like this. When you get to be as old as I am, you hear a lot of things. Not everything is recorded in writing. Some things you've got to hear about from folks who've seen them firsthand. And there aren't that many people who've seen the ditchling and lived to tell about it. Or so they say. Mm. Yeah. We should try and get as many people to leave as we can, right? If something bad is coming, we need to get people out of here. Leave and go where? These people's whole lives are in this town. Their homes, their histories, their families. Most of them don't have the kind of money it would take to start new somewhere else. You can try to convince them, but I think you'll find it's a difficult task. What kind of destruction are we talking about here? If there was just one or two, I'd say maybe a big bridge collapse or maybe a bad accident. But this many, multiplying like they are, I couldn't tell you. I don't know if this is something you'd know about, but there was a man on my way home. It was dark, but he had a miner's jacket on. He knew my name and there was something really, really wrong about him. That would be Wayne. You don't have to worry about him. 
He's harmless, just very sick. But do let me know if he bothers you again, you hear? Oh, Wayne. Okay, let's say I believe all of this. What can we do to stop whatever's coming? I'm afraid I don't have any answers that would make you happy. Maybe you could start by figuring out why they're here. I'm so sorry to cut our conversation short, but I've got things that need tending to. Stay safe, Suzaki, and God bless. You probably have a bit of time before you're needed at the library. Okay. Hmm. Haven't seen the general store yet. Let's go shopping. A young man sits at the table by the register, too preoccupied with his phone to care that you stepped in. Yeah. So if I wanted to buy some chips or something here, do I talk to you or...? He sighs. I guess, yeah. Kanika decided to skip work today, so of course whatever plans I had didn't matter. Just take the chips. I don't care. Wouldn't that be stealing? If Kanika cares about running this place right, she can hire someone else and let me live my life. She inherited the store, and I don't want to keep getting suckered into working here just because I'm her brother. We make most of our money on bulk orders anyways. A bag of chips doesn't make a difference. I'm gonna pay for my chips. I'm paying for my chips, I insist. I'm not rigging you up. Take him or leave him. Alright. I'm not about to turn down free stuff. You grab a bag of salt and vinegar chips from a nearby shelf. It will sustain you in the coming d in the coming days. How big is this bag of chips? Cool. Hi, I'm Suzaki. Just got to town yesterday. Yeah, I know. Mum told me. What's your name? Miles. See you, Miles. Miles doesn't respond as you turn and leave the general store. I got an achievement called Sticky Fingers. So the game thinks I stole. I don't think I stole. Swing by the diner. You head towards the diner. The diner is a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with the tantalising smell of breakfast. Mm, I don't think there's any point in warning anyone about the danger. Because we don't know what the danger is. Like, what are we going to say? Just... Ooh, danger. And if someone just randomly came up to me in the street and said, Hey, there's danger. I wouldn't do anything about it without more details. So, I don't think there's any point doing any warning. Talk to Avery. Hi Avery! You slide into the booth across from Avery. Hey there stranger! Before you can exchange words, Winnie sidles up, a fresh mug of tea in hand. Heard you might need this. The answer to 29 down is oink, by the way. What? But the clue is pen sound. How is that the sound a pen makes? Pig pen. Sound you're getting a pig pen. Wait, pen like pig pen? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? I don't know why you even bother with those things. They're just going to frustrate you. It's just something to do to fill the time. But maybe I should switch to Sudoku? Winnie leaves Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. And the cat's fidgeting on my lap. So, uh, thanks for telling me about last night. If you want to really get into the grisly details, you can tell me. I won't judge. Have a sip of tea. Mm. You hesitantly taste a sip of your tea. It tastes like you're drinking moulds that someone tried to unsuccessfully spruce up with lemon balm. What the hell is in this tea? Oh right, I probably should have warned you about that. It's chaga, this fungus you can harvest from birch trees. It supposedly has a ton of health benefits and it sure tastes like it. It's a challenge, you know? I could tell you about last night, but what if you don't believe me? I'm not here to judge, I'm here to listen. Okay. 
You spill the beans. Glad to have someone to talk to about the horrors you've witnessed. Wow, that is some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distance. Monsters in the woods. I may not have lived here long, but I've never heard of anything like that happening around these parts. I can't say I like the thought of it. Now that I think about it, when the cops came in for their morning coffee, they mentioned something about going out to the woods to look for someone. It must have been Duke. They seem so disconnected from it. I figured it couldn't be very serious, but wow. Hmm. Yeah. I don't get it. They saw Stella's footage. They saw what happened out there. But it feels like so far all they've done is hound me. Hey, I don't know if it would help your anxiety. But even if they think you did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come in here every day and I feel like I know them pretty well by now. And let me tell you, they have no follow through. I can't tell you the number of complaints they've just like dropped after a day or two. And I'll vouch for you if they try anything. <laughs> hmm. Do you regret moving here? I don't think I have the choice to have second thoughts. I'm not going anywhere without Aunt Winnie, and there's no way she's leaving this place. I hadn't pegged you as a transplant. Where are you from? I moved here from Charlotte, gosh, three years ago now? Maybe a little more. I've lost track. Aunt Winnie offered me a place to stay and a job, and who was I to pass on that sort of generosity? To be honest, it still feels like I just moved in. Practically everyone apart from the coal folks grew up in this town, so it's like I'm the perpetual new kid. Don't get me wrong, folks here are plenty polite and friendly, but there's a shared history I'll never be a part of. Maybe you're more at home here than you think. Stella really took up your party yesterday. I don't think she'd have done that if she didn't think you were really part of the town. You're right, Pusscat. It could be that you're getting in your head about fitting in. Hey, you know, thanks. I hadn't actually thought about it like that. I don't really want to pry. Yeah. We're on the case, but I hardly know where to start. Let me know if you hear anything. Definitely. Aw oh man, it looks like my shift is starting. Hopefully the Chag has had a chance to start working its magic. Are you struggling to get comfy, mister? Diner is where everyone comes to gossip. I hear a lot about what goes on around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. <laughs> Avery slips out of the booth, giving a friendly half wave before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner, ready to continue your day. Library time, I guess. Should we go to the library? You enter the former town hall. What once must have been a stately foyer has since been reconverted, has since been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted reference collections and reading areas. This is a good place. Oh hey, you made it! I don't think libraries have to be shush. You head over to Stella and Kanika's table and settle in. Oh, they've got foods. Oh, and hello Gretchen's here. Hi Gretchen. Hey, it's nice to meet in person. I'm Kanika. Stella filled me in about last night. You made it. Glad you could join us. You look tired. I'm not going to snitch on Miles. It's one packet of crisps.
That can shush. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty hard to fall asleep last night, all things considered. I can't say I got a wink myself. Yeah, same. Anyways, I guess we should get started. Oh! Before I forget, we've got to talk about that photo you sent me this morning. Which one? The sleepy puss cat. Hang on. Need a drink. Kanika, check this out. Suzaki found it in Tabby's garden this morning, right in the line of sight of her room. What in the world is that liquid around it? It looks like pus. Yeah, I thought viscera. Mm. Yeah, some creep in a bloody mining uniform. As in, a mining uniform covered in blood, not a bloody mining uniform. Snuck up on me last night. I think it's him. He knew my name. Sybil thought it might be some guy named Wayne. Oh, Gretchen looks worried too. Oh, it's okay, Gretchen. I won't hurt you. That creep who keeps coming around my mum's tea room. Yeah, that sounds like him, all right. I don't know what's going on with him, but there's something seriously wrong with the guy. That's uh, really concerning. Let us know if you need somewhere else to stay. I wonder if there's any connection between him and what happened in the woods last night. Like what? I mean, I don't have anything specific, but we do have that whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore, and this photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about the splatters on the ground. If he's sick, maybe it's from the creatures you encountered. Hey there, strangers! And literal stranger. Yeah. Your library is incredible! I can't imagine how much work you have to put into maintaining this sort of collection. Why are they all looking at me like I'm... insane? Like, is that not... Is that not normal? Am I weird? Probably. Oh, um, thank you. Hey, Oscar, this is Suzaki. You know, Tabby's cousin. Oh, I should have known you were Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was still a little kid when she left. But that scarlet resemblance, it's, uh, strong. Are you calling me ugly? Because it feels like you're calling me ugly. Um, I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian and only librarian. Oscar's amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the kids around here get to grow up with. They don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple of shelves of boring books donated by old people. Y'all are too kind. But speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosalina around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts. I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. Can I eat some of the foods? You know the crowd she hangs around with. They're good kids at heart. I'm sure they're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. the old Maxwell place. It's this great old abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were teens. I can't believe I used to be so reckless. The floors there were like Swiss cheese. I should really have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. Yeah. I don't like the thought of teens getting up to mischief with a capital M. With all those ditchlings in the woods. Ditchlings? Oh! You must have run into Kanika's mum on your way here. Glad we don't have to bring you up to speed. That's actually why we came in today. Have you ever heard of them? They're a cryptid, and seeing one's supposed to mean disasters around the corner. Doesn't ring a bell. Dang. Worth a shot. Okay. If you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? Oh, she's drawn a picture of one. That's cool. Well, they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. I would guess a mining disaster, personally. I mean, it's a mining town. Seems to make sense. Uh, should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll be right back. Gonna go get nab some more books. 
behave while well, I'm gone, Gretchen. Oh, look at her, though. Oh. Oh, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old girl. Oh, she's so happy. Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, drool leak from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. But she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something unusual going on out in those woods. Yeah, I need to be telling people that Jig's dead because, like, the police don't seem to be. A man's already dead. I'd say it's plenty reasonable to play it safe. I'm going to try calling Rosalina again. Look how happy Gretchen is! She's such a happy doggo. But I want, I want some of the scones, please. I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble. And we'll make sure to keep our eyes peeled. Thanks, Kanika. And Suzaki, if you see a 13-year-old girl with a black braid and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Got him! Just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right. This is going to be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. Got our snacks, got our source documents. Let's get this research party started. Reading awaits. Orange oh, Gretchen loves it. Uh, I mean, I want to look through all of them. Historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Just the thought of reading a book like this would probably put most people to sleep. I feel like I'm very much Hermione in this situation. And I'm reading Hogwarts, a history. But you've got a mystery to solve. And to solve it, you need to know everything there is to know about this town. Mm. Let's read about the coal mines. The original mining facility is no longer standing, having been destroyed in the collapse of 18... 1918. Though the new facility, outfitted with all the cutting-edge technologies of the industry, is in itself a fine example of practical construction, the first iteration of the mining camp was a true product of its time, and what few photographs exist are an interesting peek back to a different era. One can still visit the site of the original Scarlet Coal Mine, though all that remains are a few abandoned tunnels closed off to the public. The Scarlet Estate, inarguably the most striking piece of architecture in Scarlet Hollow, and the most elaborate and elegant estate in the region prior to the construction of the Biltmore in 1895. Andrew Jackson Scarlet chose the location to be atop a hill in Scarlet Hollow's geographic centre so that it might be seen from the town below. It remains a constant reminder of the family who carved Scarlet Hollow from the wilderness and provided wealth and prosperity to its residents. Everything's like... Scarlet. It'd be weird to go to a town where, like, your ancestors were so ingrained in the area, I think. First used as a field hospital during the Civil War, it was named for Silas Scarlet's eldest son, who perished in the bloody conflict. It still stands at the end of what is now the residential district of Scarlet Hollow and has served the health community, the health of the community for over 100 years. In the late 1800s, as the town prospered from a coal boom, additions were built onto the house and it was opened as a change of air clinic, bringing in prestigious clientele from around the world. They believed the fresh mountain air would do them well and Scarlet Hollow became a tourist destination for patients of all afflictions. The clinic still operates to this day as a doctor's office and stands as a building of cultural significance. Situated on the edge of Scarlet Hollow's farmlands, the Tremaine Homestead was one of the earliest settlements of Scarlet Hollow, predating even the town's famous coal mines. For many decades, the Tremaine family maintained the largest farm in Scarlet Hollow, but a break in the family led them to split the land in two and the homestead along with it. Despite many changes made to the two halves of the Tremaine Homestead in the subsequent decades, the original log structures are still visible and maintained to this day. They are undoubtedly the oldest buildings left, sc left standing in Scarlet Hollow. 
One of the first buildings constructed by the Scarlet family, the Scarlet Hollow First Baptist Church still sits on its original foundation, though the building was reconstructed to accommodate the influx of citizens during the Scarlet Hollow coal boom of the late 1800s. Attendance has dwindled since the infamous mine collapse of 1918, and while the building may have fallen into disrepair, its simple vaulted ceilings still evoke awe to any who enter. Silas Scarlett's personally funded the Town Hall's construction as the first municipal building in the then small community of Scarlet Hollow. It has stood at the end of Main Street since before the Civil War and its white columned edifice withstanding the ravages of, it, of the 1860s and continuing to stand to this day a stunning piece of antebellum architecture. After the town of Scarlet Hollow switched to a dog mayor system, what's a dog mayor system of governance? Is Gretchen the mayor? I don't know what that means. Surely it doesn't mean having a dog as a mayor. After the town of Scarlet Hollow switched to a dog mayor system of governance in the 1920s, the building has been put to different use, though the upstairs still house the town archives and a special ceremonial office for events with mayor. I'm going to I'm going to Google dog mayor. Because that's I don't know what it means. Does anyone in chat know what it means? Dog Meh. I mean Okay, all I can find is actual dogs that are mares. So unless anyone knows any difference. I've got to assume that that's what it means. Yeah, okay, so I could have just clicked. So the mayor of Scarlet Hollow is a dog. You close the book and put it back. We've got to read all of them, right? Forced into retirement at age 50 due to war injury from his time in the Indian Wars, exacerbated by his short stint serving as a captain in the Confederacy, Silas Scarlett also lost his eldest two sons to that bloodiest of wars, leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlett, to take charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the country. Andrew Scarlett's built the surrounding town into what it is today, with expensive stone buildings, expensive, yeah, a bustling main street, and overseeing it all, the elegant Scarlett estate that was until 1889 the finest and the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region, culminating in the tragic collapse of 1918. It was found that Charles Shaw, the co-manager of the mine, had loosened security measures to increase production during World War One resulting in a fatal collapse and the deaths of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlett's son, Theodore, his brother, Enoch V. Scarlett, who had taken over for their ageing father during the bustle of the war, managed to pull the mine from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So this is how your family made its fortune. Interesting. S <coughs> 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 Lots of talking. Silas Everett Scarlett was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlett in 1818, one of 12 siblings. I'm hoping that I don't need to remember this. I'm hoping that if we need to, the character will remember this. Because I'm not remembering any of this. Chat, remember it. Silas Everett Scarlett was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlett in 1818, one of 12 siblings. He grew up in eastern North Carolina during a tumultuous time in the state's history, and not much is known about his life before he joined the army in 1836. Got uh, cat hair. Fair. <laughs> is it yours, mister? Your hair. He quickly rose through the ranks, in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlet. The federal government granted that now Captain Silas attracted of bounty land in exchange for service in the Indian War, and he settled into the hills of North Carolina in 1841. That land would become Scarlet Hollow. But it started as a simple log, log cabin, 
built by Silas's own two hands, occupied by his family of ten. Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children. They got busy. Logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hills, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount, cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus, he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's now infamous coal mine. Not infamous, now famous coal mine. You're finished with this one. A few entries catch your eye. And Gretchen catches my eye, just look at her little face. Uh, yeah, Mothman. The Mothman is a large flying creature generally described as humanoid with glowing red eyes. It was first spotted by a couple in West Virginia in the mid-1960s and was encountered in the region several more times in the following years. The Silver Bridge Collapse of 1967 has been linked to a series of Mothman's sightings and it's said the presence of the creature served as some sort of omen or was a catalyst that led to the disaster. This has since become an important aspect of Mothman, with sightings of this cryptid often taken as a sign that some great misfortune is soon to follow. She was wearing a Mothman t-shirt yesterday. Uh, what's her name? Sybil? Is her name Sybil? Through... Though the... Though? Yeah, though. Though the Pine Barrens, the place where this creature is said to have been born, are far from the Appalachian wilderness, sightings of the Jersey Devil have been documented all throughout the forests of eastern United States. According to popular legend, the Jersey Devil was born to a woman named Jane Leeds. Leeds, upon realising she was pregnant with her 13th child and daunted by... Daunted. I think 13 kids would be more than daunting. Daunted by the task of giving birth yet again, cursed the child in her womb, complaining, proclaiming it would be the devil itself. Though born as a normal child, it quickly transformed, gaining a goat or horse's head, large bat wings and forked devil's tail. Kicking out the family, kicking at the family and lashing out with its tail, it flew up the chimney and out into the night, disappearing into the Pine Barrens. The Jersey Devil is one of the oldest cryptids in North American history, with sightings spanning back through the 1800s all the way back to the origin of the myth in the late 1700s. It is said to move with incredible speed and is recognisable by its high-pitched, blood-curdling scream. It's safe to say life was hard in the South after the Civil War. The land and its people had been ravaged by conflict and many turned to unusual industries to get by. One such industry was that of ginseng diggers, or sang diggers as they were colloquially known, who eked out a meagre living for themselves by digging up and selling wild American ginseng. Myths surrounding the sang diggers was plentiful, but most prominent among them was that, was that of the ginseng baby. It was said that if you dig up a ginseng root on the night of the new moon, it will cry like an infant and leave blood in the earth when it's torn free. So like Harry Potter mandrakes. The parallels to, yeah. the parallels to the European mandrake myths are clear, and it could be assumed this myth arose from cross-pollination from European immigrants. But perhaps on the night of the new moon, you should go out and dig up a ginseng root, see if it cries, and check the earth for its blood. For it could be that the myth spread not through legends passed down through immigrant families, but from the unsettling experiences of these Appalachian foragers. Maybe, maybe. One of the most famous hauntings in North American history, the Bell Witch was a strange entity that plagued the, the citizens of the Red River region of Tennessee in the early 1800s. Many strange phenomena have been attributed to the witch throughout the years, but the most famous was the haunting of the Bell family. It started out as a fairly typical haunting, with unnatural sounds echoing through the house after sundown and the appearance of a strange mammal that no one could identify or capture. Unlike other hauntings though, these acts quickly escalated to attacks on the family, and in particular the daughter Elizabeth Bell. She was constantly covered in bruises from the spirit's abuse. The spirit could frequently heard be speaking through the walls, its disembodied voice mocking the family and any visitors, and it eventually escalated to giving full-blown hallucinations to those dwelling in the Bell house. Though this haunting ended in the early 1800s, its activity continued in the region for many decades. It could be that the entity known as the Bell Witch may still dwell in the Red River region to this day. 
Hopkinsville Goblins case was a supposed close encounter with extraterrestrials in the 1950s near Hopkinsville, Kentucky. During the incident, five adults... Five adults and seven children arrived at the local police station claiming that a group of small chrome creatures had besieged their farmhouse for hours. When police arrived on the scene, they found bullet holes and spent shells, but little else in the way of evidence. Skeptics suggest that the family had simply misidentified a group of great horned owls. Even so, the incident remains one of the most thoroughly corroborated and documented cases of extraterrestrial contact. Are these all true, by the way? Or are these made up in the story? Often linked to Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon. Oh! Monstrous cat demon? No, a Wampus Cat. You're a sleepy cat. Okay. She hunted it down now by wearing a bobcat mask, tricked it into using its own vile magic on itself. Freeing the people of their region from its evil. So, what? She wore a bobcat mask. So it thought it was her and she... What? Others say the creature comes from the story of a woman who wore the pelt of a wild cat to witness forbidden hunting rites. The hunters of her village gathered to perform the rites, and she watched in secret from underneath the cat's pelt, but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt and transformed into a creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her calls are those of great sadness, and serve as a warning to anyone who dares go against tradition. Tommy knockers originated in Oh I've heard of Tommy knockers. Tommy knockers originated in Cornish mythology, spreading to the United States when Cornish immigrants began working in the Appalachian mines. They're named for the knocking that can be heard from heard from seemingly within the walls before a cave in. According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Others believe that the creatures take stolen hammers to the supports of mines and collapse them on whoever is unfortunate enough still to be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish leprechaun-like beings, but some claim they are the spirits of dead miners, forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night, after a particularly bad week of hunting, both their stomachs empty, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole and before he could even figure out what it was, he'd drawn his gun and fired at the thing, his hunger guiding his actions. But it was quick and ran back through its hidey hole, and out of sight, leaving only its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Guess this'll have to do, he said to his dog, and threw the tail in a pot to cut, cook a soup. He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling, bo- filling them both up. Big old tail, then. The hunter crawled into his bed satisfied and the dog curled up at his feet. He woke up to the sound of long nails scrabbling across the wood. His dog was nowhere in sight, only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been, and in the gloom he saw two big yellow eyes staring right at him. I want my telepo. A high hoarse voice croaked from the darkness. Go away, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him, still shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across the hard wood accompanying his movements. I want my taily po the creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, the hunter squeaks, his voice catching in his throat with fear, but there was no dog to be seen. I want my taily po Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt from the darkness, long claws stretched out towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night. But the next morning, all that remained of the hunter, his dog, and his cabin was the chimney, standing alone in the woods. Okay, question then. How does anyone know what happened? If the only people who were there were the hunter and his dog. 
and neither were ever seen again. Hmm. You're done here. You close the book and put it back. I think I'm all done. Let's check in. Oh, I got an achievement for reading all the books. All right, if we're going with what Kanika's mum told us last night, I think we can rule out any natural disasters as what brought the ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents. Looks like our state has a history with those. What about y'all? Find anything? <gasps> Who's a Pusquet? It's Pusquet. Before you can respond, a handsome black cat leaps onto the table. Stella quickly slams her book shut. Oh, hey, Pixel. Pixel's a great name for a cat. You might want to close your book. He loves to rip up any paper he can find. Seems like a weird cat to be allowed in the library. Yeah, don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Pixel immediately goes to town on Stella's treats. Sorry if Pixel's gob bothering you all. Hopefully he hasn't gob gobbled up any of our books. He can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Oh, we know what that's like, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Why exactly do you let a paper shredder freely wander a library? Have you seen this little guy's face? How could I say no to that? I mean, yeah, fair point. Fair point. You decide to leave Pixel B. The cat curls up on the table, fast asleep. Gretchen does not look impressed by Pixel. Alright, I'd better get back to shelving. Let me know if you all need anything. Mm. Let's do this book smart thing. Alright, let's talk about historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Oh my god, you read that? That book was assigned as a punishment if we misbehaved in school. It's an excellent sleep aid. NyQuil and melatonin have nothing on the historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Rumour has it that nobody has read it from cover to cover. You guys are missing out. That's one of my favourite books here. Such rich history. Guess we're just kindred, kindred spirits, Suzaki. Maybe we're... Hmm. There's a lot of things I could say. Yes, this is the most important thing. Stella, when were you going to tell me that the mayor is a dog? <laughs> Darn, I was hoping it'd be a surprise. Scarlet Hollow hasn't had a human mayor since the 1920s. Yeah, if you're hoping the mayor might be able to help us out here, you're out of luck. I mean, that's not... That's not really an explanation, though, is it? Like... The Tremaine Homestead seems like the only thing here that doesn't have the scarlet name stamped on it. Yeah, I think they've been around these parts even longer than your family. They're the, the Tremaines and the Callaways now. They literally split their farmhouse in half over that schism. Duke, rest his soul, was one of the last two Callaways left. I guess it's just down to Bo now. I can't imagine what he's going through right now. What happened to the estate? At some point, the hill it was built on started falling apart. I think it's pretty stable at this point, that you think where I'm staying am I going to die is it? Stella you've seen the place and half of it is still mostly okay hmm. why don't people go to church here we've just never really had a good pastor around these parts not as long as I've been around at least and I'm not really much of a church person anyways who has the time the building gives off weird vibes too and not in the fun haunted way even the hospital here is named after my family. I know it's the name, but calling it a hospital is generous. Right now it's one woman medical clinic. If any serious emergencies happen these days, we've got to call an ambulance from out of town. That's where Vis and his mum live. She's the town doctor, though these days she doesn't really see a lot of patients. So about the coal mines here. Kanika visibly shudders. I get cold sweats just thinking about being in a place like that. I feel for the guys who work up there. I could never. Speak for yourself. I love a good crevice. <laughs> the union busting mine collapsed from poor working conditions. Colour me shocked. Yeah, it's pretty awful. 
That's what the sculpture up front is for, commemorating all the men and children who died that day. Every kid in Scarlet Hollow learns about the collapse of 1918. Our teachers love to emphasise how many children they had working down there, probably to try and show us how good we have it, or whatever. Low bar if you ask me. You know, that could be what the ditchlings are warning us about, another collapse. Writing it down on the list of potential disasters. Yeesh, Stella, that was morbid. And besides, it was all Charles Shaw's fault. The labour market is way more strict now. There's no way you could get away with the kind of safety cutbacks he pulled. Uh, you all don't think the mine is actually about to collapse, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Whew, had me worried there for a second. I hate to give Tabitha any credit, but the mine is safer now than it was back then. Still, what a horrible thought. You never know. History tends to be written by winners. Maybe there's more to Charles Shaw's story than these dusty old books are letting up. Normally I'd be inclined to agree with you there, but we're talking about an old-timey coal boss. I'd be shocked if he wasn't cutting corners. Suzaki does make a fair point. Shaw was certainly a problematic figure, but there might be other details that were lost to time. Sure, but the guy was run out of town on a rail. And that's not a figure of speech. Back then they actually tied you to a rail and ran you out of town. There's a big mural of it over on the far wall. He got off easy if you ask me. What happened after the mine collapse? The book just kind of glosses over that. There was a union for a little bit, but it didn't last. There's not a whole lot written about the past century here. Yeah, the Scarlet Hollow mine isn't exactly the most ethically run business. No offence or anything. I'm sure Tabby runs the mines better than Charles Shaw sure did. Still hasn't let the union in though. There's a reason she and I don't talk. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with the collapse angle, but the mines seem important. The whole town is built around them. Yeah, that's fair. They're bound to be relevant in some way. Hard to argue against that, but it doesn't really give us much to go on. And just because something seems obvious doesn't necessarily mean it's right or relevant. Very true. Hmm. Yeah. Stella, what was that you were saying about nuclear incidents? You were talking about the Goldsboro thing, right? Huh, yeah. Apparently in the 60s, a B-52 carrying a live warhead broke up mid-air and dropped a couple of bombs. Fascinating bit of history there. The first of the two bombs landed upright after its parachute got caught in a tree. Thankfully it didn't go off. At the time, the government claimed the bomb was unarmed, but it later came out to be that the only thing preventing a detonation was a single electrical switch which failed to trigger on the descent. And 60 years later, the second bomb still hasn't been recovered. Right, it's conventional explosive disintegrated in mid-air, but most of the nuclear material was made unrecoverable by flooding. If I remember correctly, they just buried it and sealed it up. Goldsboro is over 300 miles from here, I don't think we have to be worried about that. Yeah, that's fair. It wouldn't make sense for Ditchlings to be here specifically if that was the case too. We also really shouldn't be looking too much at this whole disaster angle. Whatever those creatures are, they're biological. You never know with radiation. We actually know quite a bit. It just melts you, it doesn't make monsters. And a 60 year old bomb isn't going to explode on its own hundreds of miles away and kill us here. You never know. There could always be a whole underground society of bomb-worshipping mutants just waiting to blow it up. I mean, she's not wrong. We've all played Fallout. I've missed this. Yeah. Have you had any luck with Rosalina? Haha, <laughs> not yet. I knew a team would be a handful, but I didn't think it would happen overnight. I'll probably head out once you're all done and check in on her usual haunts. I don't think there's a cult. So, Silas Scarlet. What a revisionist biography. Really gl glosses over all the war crimes to paint a picture of a self-made man. It's a perfect example of why you should use multiple sources for your research instead of trusting the first thing you read on a subject. Yep, dude was a monster. Sorry you're related to him. Yeah. 
This town is stuck in the past and built on atrocities. It's already practically collapsing onto itself, no offence. But maybe that's why the ditchlings are here. None taken. Why would the ditchlings be here now, though? Scarlet Hollow's been like this for as long as I can remember. The mines are the obvious common thread between everything we've, re we've researched, between Wayne, the old collapse, and the fact that the whole town's practically been built around them. They're the smartest place to start our investigation. Good idea. There's an awful lot of mines-related stuff in my notes. We can poke around, find out if anyone's seen anything weird. Just to clarify, you two are suggesting we go to question some of the miners, right? We are not poking around unprepared in the actual mines, right? Right? Yeah, totally. 100%. I would never. We don't even have a good reason to go down there. Good, let's keep it that way. You know how I feel about mines. I promise, Neeks. We're just going to question some of the miners. And if that questioning gives us a good reason to poke around, say, a cool abandoned coal mine, then we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You can cross that bridge when we come to it. I am not going underground. I'm just messing with you. We'll stick to the surface. Yeah, and hopefully we can find out what happened to Wayne while we're at it. Mm. Tabitha's not going to like it. Yeah. I'm sure Tabitha's going to love that we're snooping around. Same goes for all of us, honestly. I can't think of a single town, single person in town Tabitha would be happy to see. We'll just have to make sure we don't get caught. We'll be super sneaky. I can even keep lookout. Look at us, going out on a caper together. I missed this. I missed it too. I mean, sure, it's not under the best circumstances, but I've been so wrapped up in running the store, I didn't realise how much I missed being able to hang out with you. Though, there is something missing. Reese. I really miss that dude. I can't believe how long it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? Nope. I've tried to plan stuff, but he's been too sick. I didn't realise it was getting so bad, that poor guy. You know, we could just pop over and surprise him. He seemed excited to meet Suzaki. Maybe we'll finally get him to leave his little cave. Hell yeah, let's do it. Alright, let's roll out. See you, Oscar. We'll let you know if we run into Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep you all posted. Reese's home stands at the edge of, a, of the forest wall, an isolated buffer cushioning the rest of the town from an unending wilderness. Unlike several of the other entries in historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow, this one still looks mostly like it did in the book. Reese, it's Stella. I brought some buddies too. Shh, not so loud. He's still sleeping. Can I help you with something? The woman in the doorway stares directly into your eyes. You can practically feel her simmering irritation washing over you. Hi, Dr. Kelly. We're wondering if it would be okay if Reese could come hang out. Are we like 12? I don't know how old we are. I guess we're adults. Nothing strenuous, we promise. I'm not going to wake him up. If he's sleeping, he probably needs it. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now anyways. Oh no, poor Reese. It's just been so long since either of us have gotten a chance to hang out with him. I'm sure he and Suzaki would get on super well too. Uh. Yeah, let's butter her up. Wow, you've really done an incredible job maintaining this place. Excuse me? Oh, don't mind Suzaki. She's just a big fan of historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Dr. Kelly looks you up and down. You don't think you've done anything wrong. But she's certainly making you feel like you have. Reese's mum turns back to the house, sighing. Sorry, I know that was a little rude. You just want to hang out with Reese, and he misses both of you too. She sighs again, as if deciding whether to finish her thought. He's usually feeling his best around mid afternoon. Why don't you come over tomorrow? We can have some supper, and you all can hang out for a bit. I don't promise that he'll be perky, but I'm sure it'll brighten his spirits to see you two again. And I suppose you can come to Suzaki. That would be great. I can bring a side dish, maybe deviled eggs. Does he still eat those? No, eggs are a little much for him. They don't settle well. You can leave the cooking to me. I know what he can handle. Okay, I'll bring soda then. That's not... Okay, yes, fine. You can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine. Ginger ale, preferably. Oh, and leave the dog at home. 
Oh, Gretchen. She might cheer him up, you know. They have those therapy dogs in hospice. No dogs. Thanks so much, Dr. Kelly. We'll stop bothering you now. See you later. Dr. Kelly nods in acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several locks clicking into place can be heard from within. Something weird going on there. God, that woman makes me so nervous. I remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids. She always had the best stickers when we had to get our shots. Maybe she's just stressed about these. Or maybe she's just nice to kids. Either way, I guess it's just the three of us. You gonna drive? Yeah, sorry. I don't like the thought of going up there without the van. Cool. I'll take my shortcut then. It shouldn't take me long to get there. You're welcome to tag along, Suzaki. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you'd rather ride with Kanika. I'm sure you're probably sick of the woods. Either way works for me. Hmm. I'm not going to ask what's up with her in cars, because I think her parents probably died in a car crash. Both her parents are dead, and she doesn't like cars. So I'm going to assume it's a sensitive subject and not. Okay. But... Hmm. I should get to know Kanika a bit more, I think. I'll ride with Kanika. See you at the mines. Kanika is a careful driver, but her old va van still bumps around on the mountain roads. Thanks for indulging us on that little diversion. Risa's mum is scary. I don't think either Stella or I have seen the guy outside of his house for years. I've seen him in person maybe five or six times in as many years. And that was always in his house, and with his mum right there, the whole time. No one even knows what he's sick with. That sort of isolation can't be good for his health, no matter what his mum says. Yeah. Stella's parents died in a car crash, didn't they? She told me her parents had died last night, and she tried to refuse a ride back to town after we made it out of the woods. It wasn't too hard to put together. Damn, that's pretty impressive. Not a lot gets past you, huh? She was in the car too. Just some cuts and bruises. But she doesn't like cars and tries her best to stay away from them. I don't think she's ever going to actually leave this town. Yeah. Has she seen someone? Like a therapist? Ha, <laughs> true. Good luck finding a therapist within walking distance of Scarlet Hollow. See one online? I don't think that's something Stella would go for anyway. She likes to solve her own problems. Hmm. She doesn't know what's actually going on with Reese, so I don't think there's any point asking that. Some of your brother is a bit... I mean, he's just a sulky teenager, isn't he? Hmm. That's a bit rude. A bit weird. Yeah. Do you have any other theories on what's going on, aside from what we talked about at the library? I don't know. I don't think there's enough information yet to support any strong conclusions. So I've been wondering if what you two saw was maybe some sort of mutated animal, like a strain of hairless monkeys or raccoons or something. Do you know about Morgan Island? It's off the coast of South Carolina and there's a whole population of rhesus monkeys infected with herpes, like 4,000 of them. Maybe the ditchlings are some kind of alopecia research monkeys. Which sounds ridiculous now I've said it out loud. Forget I said anything. I don't think they were monkeys. Those were not monkeys. I saw them with my own eyes and they were way too messed up to be anything like monkeys. I mean, that doesn't rule out lab monkeys, right? Could be that whatever made them hairless also caused weird swellings or altered their proportions. I mean, it, it could be. But like I said, we don't have anywhere near enough information. We're not going to be able to get out, are we? Can you please drive me out of town? Like, right now? We could both leave and go somewhere far away from here where neither of us need to worry about ditchlings or cataclysmic events. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no way I'm crossing Tabitha like that. The fact she brought you here is a big deal. She doesn't see people. She doesn't have guests. You being here has got to mean something to her. And if she found out I was the one who drove you out of town, which she would, there's no telling what might happen. The Scarlets still hold a lot of sway in this town, even if your cousin's all that's left of them. And hey, I don't think there's a lot to worry about yet. The ditchlings are just some weird animal, right? If we just stay out of the woods, I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah, I think I'm done. You and Kanika sit in comfortable silence for the last few minutes of the ride. 
You and Kaneko arrive at the mines before Stella. Well, yeah, I, I should think so. Stella's probably going to be another couple of meh. <gasps> hey y'all, how was the ride? Oof, I'm going to put Gretchen down for a sec. Did you run here? Yep, felt like getting a run in. I didn't want to keep y'all wa waiting. You didn't run into any of those creatures, did you? Nope. That makes sense, they're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I should feel relieved or disappointed. But we're all here, what's the plan? I guess we could just go talk to people. I guess so. I should probably be on lockout duty. I'm a bit of a persona non grata in the mines. Well, look at Gretchen and her ears. She's so like... Oh, I love Gretchen so much. Tabitha? Yeah, I might have tried sneaking in to talk to her a time or two too many. And Gretchen makes it extra hard to be sneaky. Oh, but Gretchen's such a good girl. We're probably less likely to get caught if any one of us is snooping around down there. Mm. Yeah. Still doesn't look at duty, and only one of us is going in. What's the third person doing? You know those cheesy rom-coms where someone wears an earpiece on their first dates? Whoa, do you have some kind of surveillance rig in the back of your van that I didn't know about? What? No. I have a pair of earbuds with a really good mic. We can just do a group call. I take it I'm the one of us you're talking about? Tabitha and I aren't exactly friends. And pretty much all of the miners shop at the general store. I don't want to make folks uncomfortable, you know? It's probably for the best, Suzaki. Yeah. You're good, Kanika. I've got this. Oh, what's Gretchen doing? She's having a sniff. You'll do great. Here are those earbuds I mentioned earlier. Kanika hands you a pair of earbuds. We can feed you questions if you get stuck, and Stella can give you a heads up if Tabitha's headed your way. Dang, I've missed doing this sort of thing with you. You're so thorough. Aw, oh, thanks. I do my best. I guess we should part ways and start the call, yeah? Gotta be sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Oh, mister. Can you help me be sneaky? Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. No, you just want to go to sleep. Your phone buzzes. Hey, can you hear us? Try saying something. Won't people notice that I've got earbuds on? Yeah, people these days have all kinds of things in their ears. It's called multitasking. You'll be fine. Nothing to do now but enter the work site. You pass through the unlocked fence and enter the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. I'm in. Alright, Morpheus, good to know. Let's talk to the miners first. You approach the nearest group of miners, a blonde woman and a broad-shouldered man and an old-timer. Their uniforms identify them as Harrison, Davis and Zax. You got a reason to be bothering us? Hmm. Yeah. Do you know anything about a guy named Wayne? Yeah, we knew him. He was such a cut up. Missed that dude. Yeah. Why are you talking about him in the past tense? I met him last night. Good question. Wait, what? No way. Isn't that the guy you all said was, um. Well, I guess he ain't. And he hasn't even skipped town, huh? A pretty unexpected turn of events, if you ask me. What a relief! Thought something awful had happened to the poor guy. Yeah. What did you think happened to him? What are you? Some sort of cop? I'm Tabitha's cousin. I'm here for the funeral. The miners straighten up, suddenly both say, Oh, that was the wrong thing to say, wasn't it? S sorry, I didn't know. I thought maybe you were one of them environmentalists or... Yeah, sorry for any trouble. You make sure to tell her that we said she's a great boss, okay? I'm Zax, that's Davis, and this here's Harrison. 
We don't know nothing about what happened to Wayne, you hear? So I met this guy on the bus. Wore a beanie and a shirt that said, I want to, yeah. He said he had some friends working the mines up here. Does this have anything to do with what's going on in town? A lot of people wear beanies. Look, I just figured I'd ask. The guy made a memorable impression. Well, I can't say I know anyone like that. Sorry. So, uh, what do you think of Tabitha? The mind is staring, disgust in her eyes. Harrison chews her sandwich slowly. She works hard. She's a good boss. End of story. Seen anything weird lately? Nope. Nothing at all. You make sure you tell your cousin that. Okay. I shouldn't have told them that I was her cousin. I have the regrets. Yes, Kanika, I know. I have. I have regrets. Actually, that's all. Thanks. Bye. You walk away from the miners. Maybe it was just me, but they seem to think Wayne was dead, right? It wasn't just you. You head over to the next group of miners. Right. Not saying... Oh, yeah. A flash of movement in your periphery stops you in your tracks. There's something lurking in the shadows to your right, and against your better judgement you turn to face it. You shouldn't be up here. It's dangerous. Hi, Wayne! <laughs> ghost mm, yeah. Your buddies seem to think you're dead. Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. Alright. Bit weird, Wayne. Before you can say another word, the figure is gone. Hey Suzaki, are you still there? We've just been getting static from you. Ah, oh, don't mind me. Our new friend just stopped by to say hello. Whoa, I thought I saw you talking to someone down there. Are you okay? He told me to stay at the estate for the rest of the week, but I'd be safe there. Why would he tell me that? What the hell is that supposed to mean? He must have been threatening you, right? The plot thickens. Yeah. Wayne, is trying, to, Wayne trying to take me leave just means we're on the right track. I'm not about to back down. Whoa, so brave. Yeah, I am. Heck yeah, Suzaki. We've got your back. Yeah. Hi there, can we help you with something? Yeah. Do any of you know a man named Wayne? Wayne? Do you mean Sam Wayne? What are you asking about him for? Wait, have you seen him? Yeah. I heard he went missing. Dead, more like. No, come on, man. There's no way. How could he just die? I don't know. Why don't you ask his girlfriend? Yikes, do you think? No, no way. Just saying. He wasn't exactly the first fella to fall for her, uh, charms. Lots of heartbreak in that woman's history. Lots of jilted ex-lovers if you catch my drift. Dang, who are they talking about? I told him not to get involved with her. I told him. Can I not ask who? Who's the girlfriend? Have you fellas seen anything out of the ordinary lately? Weird how? Mm. Yeah. Any odd noises in the woods? Nothing but screech owls. Have you seen any weird animals? Strange question. We don't exactly get out much. What does this have to do with Wayne? Have people been getting sick? The boss looks out for our health. Have you heard any knocking in the mines? I don't think so. Can't hear shit down there. That's all on that front. Thanks. Anything else? Do you all know this guy I met on the bus? He said he had some friends up here. Here we go again. You've got to tell us about this guy later, Suzaki. Maybe. What's he like? You tell the group of miners about your encounter on the bus yesterday. I think I'd probably remember someone like that. Yeah, he's no friend of mine, that's for sure. Never met him. Don't know him. It's settled then. The mysterious bus stranger is a ghost. He's a ghost with dripping peanuts. I, I, I don't know what. Or he was lying about knowing people here. Or his friends were here for a bit and left town. Sure, those are perfectly rational explanations. But so is a bus ghost. All equally rational theories. Aren't you ghost sceptical? 
How is a bus ghost a rational explanation here? Part of being ghost skeptical. Am I just standing there, by the way? Like, staring into space at these miners while these people are having the conversation in my ear. Feels a bit weird. Part of being ghost skeptical is keeping an open mind towards all manner of potential paranormal encounters. Yeah. What do you guys think of Tabitha? Now why would you go and ask a question like that? Are you trying to insinuate something? Horrible woman. Now fellas, let's not go besmirching the fine gentle lady. If Smith is right, she's got a lot to answer for. Alright fellas, I think we'd better cool it and get back to work before any of us say something we regret. You're probably right. Should we check in? Just as a heads up, the only group I still see out there is pretty close to the main office. It might still be worth talking to them, but I don't know if I can give you all that much for warning if Tabitha comes out. Ooh. Risk it for a biscuit. I want to try and talk to one last group of miners. Good luck got an achievement. Going around asking questions, huh? You don't look like you're from the inspector's office. I want to know. <laughs> <coughs> Do you two know about the mysterious stranger who bothered me on the bus? I think they look a bit old to know him, but anyway. You told the miners about your encounter yesterday. I've never known anybody in my entire life. How about you, Tate? Yep, never known a soul. This is going nowhere. Let's face it, Suzaki. Whoever you met on that bus is just one of the loose ends you'll just have to live with for the rest of your life. What can you tell me about Sam Wayne? Oh ho ho, he got himself into trouble, didn't he? Why, you seen him around? What's that young buck up to? Hmm. Yeah. I've heard from some of the other folks in camp that he had a nasty spat with an ex and disappeared not long after. Yeah, you mean the boss? As far as I know, that never ended. Him and Tabitha. Stella audibly gasps. Yeah, I figured he just ran off to live in that big mansion with his bell. The thought of a strapping young man like him with that sour face broad always left such a bad taste in my mouth. So she's got a string of exes. Oh my god, gross. As if you wouldn't fall on your knees if a woman of means shared the slightest bit of interest in you. Or any woman at all. Fair enough. But I suppose this begs the question, did she run him off, or did some jealous son of a bitch oust him? Oh. Yeah. Wait, are you talking about Tabitha? Yep. Dang, I figured that's what they were getting at, but it's weird to hear it out loud. You good, Stella? Yeah, I just had no idea. Have you noticed anything strange around here lately? All kinds of weird stuff happens in these hills. What sort of weird do you mean? Uh, people getting sick? I mean, some of the older miners, sure, but I wouldn't call that unusual. Any noises from the woods? All the time. Howling, screaming, all sorts of fiendish caterwauling. Probably just screech owls and bobcats, you old coot. Might be, might not be. But I heard something the other night that sent the fear of God shivering down my spine, I tell you. I saw the creatures that made that noise. Pale, hairless and horribly misshapen with little twisted up faces. Two men stare at you, a look of disquiet in their eyes. I ain't never heard of anything like that up here. Damn, that almost sounds like a ditchling. Yeah, he knows. My grandma used to tell me stories about them when I was a little kid. I guess it's not just my mum. I should probably... get away before... Tabitha comes back. That's all on that front, sure. That's all, thanks for the help. My pleasure. If that Wayne keeps bothering you, just let us know and we'll whip him into shit. Um, Suzaki, I think we've got a problem. Oh no! What the hell are you doing here? Oh crap, good luck. Sorry, Suzaki. And that's our cue. Pardon us. You shouldn't be here, this place is dangerous. Why can't you just stay in the estate and stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? What is that ridiculous thing doing in your ears? Are you trying to record my employees? Are you trying to record me? 
Tabitha snatches the earbuds out of your ears and throws them to the ground. Typical phone addicted city dweller. Ugh. Ugh. And I have a meeting in five minutes. I can't even drive you back. Okay, look, I don't want you wandering anywhere else. Just stay here for an hour. I can take you back to the estate as soon as my meeting wraps up. Can you please do that for me? Oh, what shall I say? What shall I say? Why not? You were dating Sam Wayne. What happened to him? Excuse me? I'm not dating anybody. I don't even know a Sam Wayne. Whoever's been telling you this is clearly trying to spread rumours to hurt my character. Who said that? I want names. Yeah. Tabitha, he's been following me. Why? How should I know? I don't know what these people told you, but I'm sure it's all bullshit. I don't involve myself with their lives. You think a bunch of miners on a break are just going to be honest with a random stranger that wanders into their camp? You're more naive than I thought. I need to get to my meeting. Just stay here until I come to get you and do not move a muscle. Oh, if you don't want to be followed by some weirdo, just stay home. I mean, that would work. That would work. Top of the bush is off to her meeting. You stoop to the ground and pick up Kanika's earbuds. Sorry I wasn't able to give you a better warning. You good? Let's just meet at the van. Hello? You're interrupted by a sudden movement out of the corner of your eye. The girl carrying a bundle of snacks pops through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of the hill. That's... Mmm... Can't remember what her name was. Began with an R. Ro Rosita? Rosalie? Something like that. Hey, uh, Rosalina. Hey, uh, I think I just saw Rosalina. Wait, really? What is she doing here? Doing a delinquency. I'm going after her. Good idea. We'll try and catch up with you. Let's go. You rush over the hill and get your bearings. The sounds of active mining fading into the distance. Rosalina is nowhere to be found, but dusty, dusty footprints point towards a nearby mine. She didn't. I guess the old Baxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After a collapse that killed over a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drag me into an abandoned coal mine. I don't think we should go in. Okay, if this was me, I'd probably just, like, call someone. Have teens always been like this? I feel like I really missed out on my risk taking years. I never did anything like this. Oh yeah, I would never. Okay, maybe I've poked my head in there a few times. Well, let's get in there before someone gets hurt. Whoa, are you sure you want to tag along, Neeks? Suzaki and I can handle this on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. As much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not allowed to let I'm not about to get Rosalina get hurt in there. Even if it means I have to go underground. What about Gretchen? I think Stella and Gretchen should stay outside. I don't think Gretchen wants to go in there. <laughs> Gretchen's little face. Stella and Kanika disappear into the mines. Before you follow, you briefly wonder if you should let Tabitha know about this. We should. Call her. You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. What is it? You know I'm in a meeting. A kid just stuck in, snuck into the shore mine. I figured you should know. What? Are you serious? Why do things keep happening to me? Oh, whatever. I'll head over there as soon as I can. Just stay where you are and wait for me, alright? God, I don't even know why I'm trying to reason with you. It's not like you'll listen. Yeah. Oh, I will happily wait. I do not want to go in there. I've got an achievement for that. Good. <laughs> Tabitha hangs up on you. Wait for Tabitha. You find a tree to lean against and wait for your cousin. Stella and Kanika will probably be fine without you. You stand outside the mines, anxiously eyeing the tree line, hoping not to glimpse any human movements. Ooh. Huh, you actually waited for me. I don't know what to say. Mm. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't I have waited? D do I need to explain that to you? You haven't exactly been reliable since you've gotten here. 
Come on, let's get this over with. I don't like the thought of you walking around in an abandoned coal mine, but I'd rather not leave you right here and then send it. You should be safe enough with me there to guide the way. Tabitha huffs her way up to the mine entrance and disappears into the darkness. You follow her and enter the mine. Let's go. The inside of the mine is warmer than you'd expect it, the air thick and wet. The ceiling hangs much lower than you are tall, forcing you and Tabitha to hunch over, your legs bent in a painful squat as you begin to navigate its maze of corridors. Do you know why the entrance to this place is boarded up? Probably because it's not safe? <laughs> because deep down you like being a curmudgeon. No. Because there was a collapse a hundred years ago that killed a bunch of people? 168 people. A man named Charles Shaw decided it was okay to use faulty wood for support struts and the entire mine came down. It almost ruined our family. A lucky few died instantaneously, but for most of the souls who perished here it was slow and agonising. Trapped under rubble and left to slowly succumb to crush injuries or dehydration. It's not nice. It took a week to clear out most of the rubble and recover the bodies. The few survivors who were dragged out were never the same. I can't say I blame them. Yeah. You've spent a lot of time thinking about this place, haven't you? I have. There are still bodies down here that were never recovered. 168 people climbed down to their deaths that day, unaware of the hand they've been dealt until they were literally buried by it. None of us know the price we have to pay until our debt is due. Tabitha's ruminations are interrupted by a thunderous knock echoing from deeper in the mine. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like rocks shifting somewhere deeper in the mine. We should be careful. Have you not been careful up until this point? Did I give you my whole tragedies of the past spiel for nothing? Come on, you came from this way. Why are we going towards... Why are we going to wards where the rocks are falling? The deeper you pro progress into the mine, the heavier the air becomes. Cold dust hangs in thick clouds around you, even, it's, even though this place was abandoned over a century ago. Echoing through the tight corridors, you and Tabitha can pick up snippets of tense argument. Puppet. Now I have two puss cats. But you can't both sit on my lap, I'm afraid. My lap's taken, Puppet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but my lap's taken. First come, first served in this household. I can't believe your dad sent people to follow you. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becca. It is messed up. I don't need him telling me where I can be. You could at least check in so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's really not asking for much. Hello, gorgeous girl. Hey, puppy. Come on, kiddos. There's some real spooky stuff going on in town right now. You shouldn't be hanging out down here. We're not kids. Yeah, we're teens. Yeah. You are kids. Well, you look like a bunch of kids to me. Are those canned strawberry margaritas? Where did you even get those? Oh no, I know that isn't you, Miles. It had better not be you. Yeah, whatever, it's me. What are you even doing here? Looks like we found our trespassers. I still can't believe that Stella managed to drag Kanika out here. She avoids me like the plague. Here we go, Yeah, what's the deal with you and Kanika? Honestly, I have no idea. I don't hold anything against her aside from the fact that she's always hated me. She probably just got jealous that Stella and I started spending time together. But that was years ago, so who knows? Hmm. Yeah. What do you think of Kanika? I think the two of us are more alike than she'd ever care to admit. I respect her, but don't tell her I said that. I wouldn't want to appear weak. Let's move on. They're close. You breathe a sigh of relief as the tight passageways give way to a small cavern. 
Within, a group of teens engage with Stella and Kanika in a heated argument. All of them are too caught up in the moment to notice you or Tabitha approach. My dad is a foreman at the continuous mining facility and he says they only abandoned this mine because there wasn't enough coal left, so it's actually really safe and we can hang out here whenever we want. Wait, Becca, I thought your dad was a charge hand. No, Alexis, he got promoted last month. Got an achievement. Correction, your father was a foreman at the continuous mining facility. We'll see if he even has a job in the morning. What? Oh shit. Oh hey Tabby, hey Suzaki, we thought we'd lost you there. Did you run off to snitch to Tabitha? Kadika sighs. It's probably for the best. These kids are refusing to listen to us. Hey, don't talk about us like we aren't here. Yeah, we can hear you. Alexis, don't butt in. I'm trying to make a point. Do none of you understand what a boarded up mine entrance is supposed to mean? It means it's closed, condemned, not fit for human use. Oh, come on, this place is way sturdy. Check it out. No, don't, no. The team with the beanie jumps up and slaps a strut on the ceiling. Oh, was that the knocking we were hearing earlier? Oh my god, Zane, cut it out. You're embarrassing us. I'm sorry for Zane's behaviour. I don't think he realises how ex how extremely 8th grade it is to jump up and hit things. Uh, no offence for us, leader. None taken. The other 8th graders are totally immature. Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill and smart too. Enough. The damage is already done. Now leave. I'm tired of people in this town dragging my cousin headlong into danger. I can't believe I actually agree with Tabitha about anything, but this is the worst place I've ever been in my entire life, and I would like to see the sun again before I die. Oh, come on you guys. Maybe it's not a big deal. We used to do dangerous stuff all the time, and I still do dangerous stuff now. I mean, I don't like this particular situation, what with the whole ditchling thing, but outside of that, who are we to tell them where they can hang out? I don't know who you think you are in this situation, Stella, but I own this mine. It's entirely within my rights to tell them to leave. Much like it is entirely within my rights to tell you to leave. Was your lifetime ban from my mind's not clear enough message for you? Hell yeah, Tabitha. Tear the sad 20-something to shreds. Hey, I'm defending you, and I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? Uh, running a clickbait a YouTube channel where you run around in the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. So she's sad. So what? Give it a few years and you'll be sad too. The passage of time is inescapable. Look, we just wanted to give Rosalina a good time. Her home life sucks right now. Yeah, tell him about where you have to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the past couple of weeks. Dad says we can't stay at our house. They've got a hot plate and a couple of cots in one of the back rooms. It's actually a pretty sick setup. No, it isn't, Zane. Rosalina deserves better. I don't care about your home life. If you're going to do your underage drinking, go do it in the woods. Just get off my property. Tabitha. Look, Rosalina, I'm sure Oscar has good reason for that. He's a good guy and he cares about you. He thinks our house is haunted. Oh. Wait, what? And I should care because... Because it's such a bullshit excuse. I bet he couldn't afford it anymore and is lying to you to save face. What a coward. Hmm? Dropping things. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Isn't that, like, bullying or something? Shut up, Zane. Back up. He says it's haunted? I can't believe he didn't mention it to me. I could investigate. There's no ghost, Stella. It would be cool if there was, but Becca's right. I just wish you would be honest with me and tell me what's really going on. It's like he doesn't think I can handle it, like I'm still a little kid. Ugh, you're all children. None of you realise how good you have it. Back in the day, each and every one of you would be pulling 12-hour shifts in this exact mine. If it weren't for child labour laws, the five of you might have some actual character. Exactly. Rosaline is not that mature anyway. She still sleeps with stuffed animals. There's nothing wrong with sleeping with stuffed animals. Just saying. That doesn't mean she's not mature. I still have pork chop, you know. I rest my case. Wait, what did you say about child labour? <sighs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, I, it, it's not my place really, is it? I'm not going to weigh in on this. This is between you and your dad, and the two of you should talk about it anywhere that isn't here. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, if Rosalina South is haunted, we should break in and like Ghostbuster or something. Sounds pretty bad to me. Whatever gets you delinquents out of my mind. Oh my god, Zane. You can't Ghostbust if there is no ghost. Also, Rosalina lives there. She can't break into her own house. There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out how to bust it if it's actually real. And if it isn't real, well, problem solved. You know, Rosalina, you could always stay over at my house until Stella ghost busts your place. We have a finished basement with a pull-out couch. Why are we talking about this like it's a thing? It's not a thing. There is no ghost. I don't care, and I can't believe I've wasted this much time trying to argue with children. I'm washing my hands of this and calling the cops. Feel free to leave before they show up. You hear that, Miles? We're leaving. I suggest the rest of you kids leave this empty mine before someone gets black lung or gets crushed by rocks or it meets any one of many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. Kanika is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. I keep forgetting that this is a horror game. That wasn't me, I swear. Then what was it? Come on, Stella. Didn't you have a whole list of perfectly natural explanations for scary mind noises? It's Tommy knockers for sure. I know this isn't why we came down here, but we've got to check it out. Stella. I know, I know, but weird stuff's been happening around here the past few days. What if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes couldn't be higher. Do you have no sense of self-preservation? I want you out of here, Stella. Ah, oh, come on, Tabby. You can come along too. If you guys are going after something spooky, count me in. Nobody is going deeper in the mine. No one's staying in the mine. You're all leaving. Please listen to Tabitha before my heart gives out. It'll be fun, Neeks. It will not. You hear something over the sound of Stella pleading with Kanika and Tabitha. Something like the shuffling feet of stone and the whispering of mischievous teens. Hmm. God. You turn to see Becca and Alexis gone, and Rosalina anxiously hovering in front of a small tunnel in the cavern wall. She freezes as you notice her. <sighs> Rosalina, what are you doing? I don't know. What am I doing? Wait, what? Rosalina, don't go in there. Becca and Alexis, stop trying to get us all killed. Sorry guys, I'm gonna hang back. Ugh, oh, I knew you weren't cool enough to hang out with us, Rosalina. Come on, Alexis, we'll have more fun without her. Oh, all right. Are you kidding me? Rosalina, what were you thinking? What were they thinking? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Unbelievable. Wow, Kanika, maybe if you weren't still scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneak off. I noticed them sneak off, and like, I've been zoning out the whole time we've been here. Oh, they must have squeezed through that child-sized tunnel. Yeah. Dang, I've always wondered where that goes. I've never been able to get these hips through there. Stella, stop sneaking into my minds. Please, I am literally begging you. If only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, we could already be done with this little mess, but no, there just have to be remnants from a bygone era. Ugh, oh, didn't you just talk about how child labour was the good old days a minute ago? I was trying to get you to leave my mind. Becca shouts back from the other end of the tunnel. We are not about to let you come in here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been here a million times. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. Also, sorry Rosalina, I'll see you tomorrow. I just, whatever. Come on Alexis, I know a cool spot this way. Okay, I think I know where that tunnel rejoins the rest of the mines. I'll go look for them, and I want each of every one of you to take note of the fact that I'm doing that. If those idiots get themselves lost and die, I am not letting their families sue me into the ground. Uh, are those really your priorities right now? Yeah, do you have a problem with that? I want the rest of you out of my mind. Except for you, Suzaki. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Yeah, sure. I could never fit in that tunnel anyways. They've crossed a barrier that I cannot, so my time here is up. But only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. 
Whatever, I still have to do my dailies anyway, and the service down here sucks. What about you, girl? Uh, are you sure you don't want me to come along? Maybe I could help you get Becca and Alexis to leave. Don't make me ask you twice. I'll be fine, Rosalina. I think your dad would kill me if we let you stay down here any longer. Okay, can I at least wait outside? Yeah, we can wait outside together. No, you are not about to weasel your way into this Stella. Just mooching. Oh, come on, Tabby. I've been down here a ton. I could totally help out. Tabitha sighs. Oh, there's no getting rid of you, is there? Fine. I won't waste my time arguing. Mm. Yeah, we need professionals. I've read a lot of stories about cave rescuers needing their own rescues. Are we biting off more than we could chew? Should we get some professionals down here? I am a professional. I'd also prefer to resolve this issue without word getting out if possible. Again, I don't want to deal with angry parents trying to sue me for their own negligence. Inspiring. Oh, don't worry, Suzaki. It'll be fun. And safe. I'm sure that's exactly what you told her last night and we all know how that ended. She's not wrong. She is not wrong. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't. Uh, I shouldn't get in the middle of their argument. I'm not getting into the middle of this. There's nothing to get in the middle of. It's fine. I said Stella can tag along. You, you know you're happy I'm coming with. Hmm. I'm coming along, but I want to stress that it is against my will and better judgment. Noted. Let's not linger any longer than we have to, shall we? Want me to take Gretchen with me? I don't know if it will be easier to cover more ground without her. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want a repeat of last night, and who knows if we'll have to do any climbing. I'll see you on the other side, hopefully soon. Bye, Gretchen. For sure, we won't be long. Cool. Can't wait to bust some ghosts tomorrow. Tell Alexis I'm sorry. Kanika, Miles, Zane and Rosalina head towards the entrance of the mines, leaving you, Tabitha and Stella to find the remaining teens. We're going to take a light, right? Alright, no dawdling. We should be able to catch up with them if we go this way. You and Stella exchange a glance as Tabitha ventures forward. Off we go, I guess. As the three of you move deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation bounce across the walls. Becca, why are we doing this again? I thought... You thought Tabitha was, like, really cool. Why are you trying to get her all mad? Uh, we're doing this because Tabitha is really cool? She doesn't let anyone boss her around, so we can't just let her boss us around. Oh, you hear that, Tabby? Someone thinks you're cool. I can't believe she used to hang out with a nobody like Stella. Hey! I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. I like that River Runner video. Oh, come on, she doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? I mean, not yet, but I'm in talks with Meat Rice to him. And I make plenty from ads and donations. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Dang, Stella. Meat Rice? That's a big deal. They're unlike every big podcast. Thank you, thank you. Feels like a really big step for the channel. I'm just glad they're not gossiping about me. They're gonna start gossiping about me, aren't they? Yeah, I know they're just teens, but some of that stuff stung. Another knock closer interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Is it just me, or is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? It's not just you. I really don't like that knocking. Calm down, Alexis, it's just mind sounds. Did, did you see that? No, it was just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. Becca, I swear, I saw something. Shut up, there's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. Mm. There's a lot of things. <laughs> that sounds just the active mine echoing through the walls, right? Nah, it's Tommy Knockers, I'm sure of it. 
It's not Tommy Knuckers. That being said, it's also definitely not the active mine. We use a machine these days and it sounds nothing like that. It's probably just rocks falling somewhere deeper in the mine, which is also bad, for obvious reasons. Uh, can't believe they're making us do this. They'd better get grounded when all this is said and done. As much as I appreciate the sentiments, I hope you're wrong. If they get grounded, it means people found out about this. I hate dealing with parents. Look on the bright side, Suzaki. If they didn't come down here, we'd have missed out on a golden opportunity to get spooked. Tabitha glares at Stella. Yeah, we're getting closer. Let's keep moving. As you progress deeper into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. <laughs> The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A century old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the echoes of terrified teens, their panicked arguing bouncing down the pitch black corridors. Becca, we need to leave. This isn't fun anymore. This is plenty fun. I bet you're only saying that because you want to hang out with that dorky crush of yours. She's just an eighth grader. Becca, this isn't about Rosalina. I know you can hear that knocking. And here we are. The tunnel they crawled through passes through the chamber below, and it sounds like they're still down there. I've never been this far in. Excuse me. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. Tabitha crawls up to the ladder and disappears over its edge. Alright, let's do this. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins the climb down. Do I have to follow them down? I feel like one of us should stay up here, in case the ladder breaks or something. Then we'll just all be stuck in the cave. You walk to the ladder and climb down. I don't think this is a good idea. Hey kids! Oh, great, the adults are here. Thanks Alexis. Real nice. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Becca, is needing to feel like you're better than other people so important to you that it's worth being buried alive over? What? What are you talking about? Give me a break. The whole time we've been down here, you've done nothing but tear down every single person around you. The only people who do that are people who are afraid of themselves. Leave. Now. I. Whatever. Ugh, this isn't fun anymore. Fine, we'll leave. Thanks, Suzaki. Whoa, good job. As Becca and Alexis move towards the ladder, the black chamber before you draws your focus. The voices around you, those of the teens and your companions, sound odd. Distant. We, I don't... We don't have any choice. What if I don't want to step forward? There is something in the darkness before you that's much louder though you don't hear it. You don't want to. You don't hear it, but you can feel it in your chest. A desperate need to perceive and be perceived. No! No! Wrap yourself in the darkness of the pit. Hey, are you alright, Suzaki? Bear witness. What do you think you're doing? Get away from there. Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light from your phone illuminates the chamber. Whoa. Suzaki, Suzaki, are you alright? Oh, thank God you're alive. It looked like you had a seizure or something, and then you and Tabby just conked out. I'm fine. Ugh. You can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither of you move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourself while you're still recovering from whatever it was. I'm getting the kids out of here and then I'm going to get you both some help. I'll be back soon, I promise. You fade back out of consciousness as your companion climbs out of the pit, intent on your rescue. What are those things? Oh, they... 
like ghosts of the miners. Those lights like the lights on their hats. You raise up on your elbows, head still swimming from the visions, your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues, now magnitudes more intense than ever. You can't help but notice the timber struts around you trembling, as if they were being struck by invisible blows with each knock. They're all that stand between you and the many tons of rock over your head, and they suddenly seem terribly fragile. God, that knocking is not helping my headache. What the hell just happened? Mm. Yeah, I remember you diving towards me. Did you know something might happen? I've seen horror movies. You looks like you were about to wander off and get yourself killed. I didn't want to let you out of my sight, not down here. The entire cabin shakes with the sound of rock falling. I don't know what the hell is up with this knocking, but that is the sign of a mind to collapse. Quick, up that ladder. Climb like hell. Yes. This way, come on. Your cousin moves with the kind of swiftness you'd expect from someone who spent her entire life working in and around coal mines. You push your body to move as quickly as it can, though you're slowed down by the cramped corridors and winding passageways of the mine. Then comes the sound of splintering wood. You pick up the pace. The entrance is so close. Let's go! And there it is. Freedom! Whew. You and Tabitha manage to squeeze through the entrance just as the walls of the mine come crashing down. What an achievement. Holy shit, you're okay. Thank God. And everyone's accounted for. That was a surprisingly close call. We could have all died in there. What did you weirdos do? Everything was fine until you adults showed up. Becca, shut up. What What did you just say to me? I said you should shut up. I'm sick of your two-faced bullshit. They almost didn't get us killed down there. You did. And now you're trying to pass it off on whoever else you can. It's just the cherry on top of this whole shit show of a friendship. I'm really not in a good headspace for this conversation. I could have died in there. Why are you doing this to me? No, enough. No playing the victim this time. Being friends with Rosalina has made me realize how horrible you are to me. Friends aren't supposed to be mean to each other. Friends shouldn't be scared of each other. I never wanted to go into that stupid mind. It was your idea. We could have died. If these grown-ups hadn't shown up, we could have been buried alive in that stupid little tunnel drinking stupid strawberry margaritas in a can. Screw all of you. Should we go after her? No. Let's have a little tantrum. Did that feel good, Alexis? Finally telling her off. Yeah, I guess. Ah, oh, she's going to be so mad at me. She probably won't talk to me for a week. Maybe a month. Maybe the rest of my life. It's okay, Alexis. We don't need her. What do we do now? Ugh. Oh, now I drive you two home. I've already texted your parents and I'm sure they're worried sick about you. Rosalina and Alexis duck off to the side as an, ex as an exhausted Tabitha approaches your group. I'm going to get my car and then we're going home. Tabby. Tabitha leaves towards the active mine without another word and you're afforded a quiet moment to catch up with Stella and Kanika. Hmm. Yeah. <coughs> there was a stone carving on the wall of that pit. It gave me some sort of vision. I saw what happened to this place. You sure it wasn't just auto-suggestion? We talked about the mine a lot today. I don't know, Neeks. You weren't down there. Suzaki and Tabby had, like, simultaneous seizures, next to a creepy stone carving. It was like something out of a movie. Just because they passed out or had seizures doesn't mean it wasn't auto-suggestion. I'm pretty sure Tabitha and I saw some ghosts down there. Did you not see them? They were right behind Stella just before you all left. Whoa, I didn't see anything other than you in that carving. That's super weird. I don't want to doubt what you experienced, but you were deep in a dark abandoned coal mine. You might have just been trying to see things. You know, now that I think about it, that totally fits the profile of some of the Tommy Knocker stories. What if they're actual bona fide ghosts? 
Oh, Stella. Everything that happened down there centred around that main chamber where I saw that carving. Stella showed me a photo. Weird stuff. Yeah, really weird. They weren't Tommy Uh, ditch links. Yeah. Not to be flippant, but that wasn't the end of our ditchling problem, right? I think you're right. We've still got a lot of unanswered questions too. Even more than we had this morning. And we had a lot of questions this morning. This is all still a little too magic for me. Just because two bad things have happened doesn't mean there's a pattern. Right? What happens now? Looks like Tabitha's back. I'd better drive these kids home. Come on, let's get back to the estate. It's been a long day and I need it to be over. I'll see you tomorrow, okay, Suzaki? Excuse me, I... Just stop trying to get my cousin killed, Stella. Come on, let's go. Sabatha starts walking to her car, pulling you by your arm. Uh, yeah, I'll text you when we're back. Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You try to keep an eye on the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk behind the tree line. Uh, yeah. Why do you treat Stella like that? Didn't you two used to be friends? It was a different time in my life. I just wish she'd get that we're not in high school anymore. I'm a different person than whoever she thinks she knows. Sorry about today. It's fine. At least everyone's okay. There are a lot of parents who should have kept tighter reins on their kids. I never got into any trouble like this when I was a teen, and I have Pearl land to thank for it. Hated it at the time, but that strictness paid off. Ugh, what am I telling you this for? Uh, yeah, you can tell me stuff. I'd like to know more about you, and about Pearl land for that matter. Maybe later this week. I don't have the energy to get into it like right now, but I think I'd like that. Wow. Are we actually becoming friends? Yeah. You're right. There are a lot of adults who should have done a better job tonight. Exactly. People who aren't ready to be parents shouldn't be parents, and clearly there are some parents who aren't ready. Take Oscar. There are tons of people more qualified to be parents who can't even conceive, and here he is having a kid at 19 and clearly letting her just do whatever the hell she wants. I mean... I don't think he's the worst parent in the world. It's not fair. Oh. She wants kids. Do you want kids? Lots of people want kids. Yeah. How are you holding up? I've been better. Yeah, I'm not going to antagonise her. We were getting along quite well. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into silence. You once again crush... Apparently I can't talk anymore. You once again cross the... Fre Why is that so hard? You once again cross the threshold. Cross the threshold. Thank you. In <coughs> Into the estate. The musty stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with its undertones of mildew and wood. Wood. Rot. Mildew and Is it just me that can't say that? Mildew and wood rot. Mildew and wood rot. Really hard. While this day was a lot more stressful than it needed to be, but at least nobody got hurt, I'm going to bed. I suggest you do the same. Thanks for calling me about those kids, by the way. It was unexpected. And for waiting for me. I appreciated it. I'll see you in the morning. Bye then. Sabatha turns and makes her way up the stairs. Turn in. You head up to your room to turn in. I said I'd text Stella and Kanika. You collapse into Tabitha's dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the shore mine, you barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. Y'all... 
these are those things, right? Kanika sends a picture of a pair of ditchlings by the side of the road. I saw them again too. Another picture, this time of them staring from a tree. WTF? These things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there's more to them being here than the mine collapse. No way I'm sleeping tonight. You think about looking out the guest room window, but at this point you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off, replaced by a creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes, even as you stare down at the ominous pictures on your face. If it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you would almost feel comfortable as you settle in between the covers, your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, you see the shadowy figures that gather behind Stella in the mines. Your thoughts are drawn to the carving on the wall and to the vision it imparted upon you. Your eyes shoot back open, your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Oh, hello! Oh, you chose to come and sleep with me! Oh, I'm so honoured. It's always lovely when a cat wants to spend time with you. I'm going to go into a bit of a side note about cats now, but I feel like cats are so independent and not particularly needy a lot of the time and so when a cat wants to spend time with you it's just so nice because you know they've got no agenda they just want to be with you so if Fru Fru wants to come and curl up on my bed that's so lovely it's nice to see another being even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease and you finally slip into a deep sleep. Yeah. You foo-foo. got three achievements this is the end of episode two episode three awaits proceed if you dare well I'm gonna save and that is where I'm going to end because I can only do one chapter at a time otherwise my voice will give out but I'm so enjoying this. I hope you're enjoying watching it too. Um, I really, I do love the music. How good is the music? I am absolutely loving everything about this game. I'm loving the art style, the music, storyline, choices. I reckon this is going to have a lot of replayability. I can already see that I want to replay it making different choices and probably with different traits and see how the story changes because of that and see how my relationships with people change and all that sort of thing so I'm really looking forward to it um, but for now that is it from me so I will say make sure you are following and getting alerts when I am live because then you'll see when I'm playing the next episode which at this rate will probably be tomorrow night because I am absolutely obsessed with this game but we'll see um, but yeah so make sure you're following and I will see you next time bye